Friday. That's what the kids call it. We aren't kids, so true? we call it Friday. Is that true? Do Friday? Kids, yeah. Do yes. They do that? Really? Yes. Okay. Isn't that what Maggie calls it? <laughs> Maggie doesn't talk yet. So. You think she doesn't? I heard her today. She, she does. Steve with Tar. It's Steve O from KDWB Hi. joining Thanks, us. Do the kids call it Friday? You got. You would know better than both of them. Yeah, guys. KDWB. Yeah. I was actually hanging over at Egan High School the other day. Yeah. And I did not hear. The cops let you back. Well, it was weird, but yes, they did. <laughs> and they said, don't say fry anymore, more, old man. And they oh. kicked me out. Oh. It was horrible. So there you got your answer. I and they told, that was embarrassing. Just never again, don't do that anymore, girls. All right, mm -hmm. we're sorry. It's no. all right. We do uh, have something interesting to talk about. Actually, we have a couple of interesting things mm -hmm. to talk about. Let's what? start with Steve Harvey, though. Yeah. Not sorry. He's not even sorry, not sorry. No. He's just not sorry. A memo to the talk show host, or the talk show host sent to staff, got leaked. It basically said, do not approach me in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Harvey told Entertainment Tonight that he stands by his memo, saying that he couldn't find a way to get to stage or even sit in the makeup chair, for heaven's sakes, without someone just walking in on him. Adding that he's always had a policy where someone can come and talk with him, but workers just started to take advantage of it. Oh, poor Steve Harvey, right? Two things. Two things here. <laughs> I've hung out with Rena before. She does the exact same thing, all right? <laughs> okay. Second thing, maybe three things actually. Second thing is, did you blame him? It's like you get to work and everyone's got a million questions for you and you're like, I just want to sit down or I just need to go to the potty. It's your job. It's your job. You're right. But it's like, let's set up an appointment. The great Steve Jobs, because I know everyone loves having examples of Steve Jobs when something like this happens. We do. He had like a rule where if he was having a meeting that you needed to actually have a purpose for being in that meeting or why are you there? You could be doing something else. So right. same thing for Steve Harvey. It's like, uh, while I'm walking down the hallway, is this the most efficient use of your time and my time to be talking about the Mets game or the Twins game, which Steve Harvey, I hear, is not a fan of either. But if he were, he would say that sort of thing. I thought there was number three. What was number three? I got lost. I get distracted easily. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's Mother's Day, so I'm really thinking about what I'm going to get okay. for okay. my mother and my, really my wife. My mom I've given up on, just my wife, because I live in fear. Hi, Mom. Hi. Sorry about that. I'm just going to apologize to your mom. We'll She's talk about in moms studio. in a second. Though. All right, Tom Brady. Yeah. He is calling the Madden curse a bunch of Hooey. Yeah. Steve O. Yeah. The Patriots quarterback is yeah. the cover boy for Madden 18. This is his first time. That's surprising, actually. I think so, too. Now, the Madden curse claims that something bad happens to whoever is on the cover of that game. Adrian Peterson has been called a victim, but in a Facebook video, Brady, Brady calls the curse a myth. He's saying he will break a mirror and walk under a ladder to no, prove it. No, he did. Okay, that's what I meant. Besides, the guy's already won five Super Bowls, so maybe he's got it. Myth? Yeah, like, does it matter anymore? That's, I can't believe he Ooh, did that. Oh, yeah, that's weird. That's, that's, why don't you flirt with just, danger, yeah, Tom Brady, right? you goof? Nope, What's he going to do now? Out. Deflate a football? Any hoosies. Oh, I, I would say this. If I could move to Boston tomorrow, I would. Why? Just so I could cheer for a winning team. You're right. Tom Brady is a winner. He'll always be a winner. He can do anything he wants to. He is the GOAT for a reason. There's a reason it's the GOAT edition. Um, the only thing he can't do is a great Boston accent. I'm the only one, and you, Jen, are the only ones that do great Boston accents. I'll let you do yours now. Go. Do it. I have a cold. Do your cock the cod, have it yard. <laughs> or how about them apples? Do it. Do it. Remember, you did it last weekend. Remember? We were I don't at, remember last weekend. We were, really? I you were that? Go? Like that? Yeah. We were at the bad. loop or something. We were, loop or something. We were <laughs> Is that where the kids go Minneapolis. and don't say Frye? They don't say Frye. We were at uh, Uptown or something. TGI Fridays. <laughs> we were at Uptown. It's always Friday at TGI Fridays. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. It is Friday here, and mm -hmm. Sunday is Mother's Day. Let's bring it all back to mom and mm -hmm. some of the best advice that you've received. Let's take a look here. From Eve, learn to get things, learn to let things go. From Beth Ann, if you find a pair of really comfortable shoes, buy another pair. What is some of the best advice that your mom has given you? Um, some of the best advice mom gave me, fun story. Mm -hmm. I bring it up once in a while. My mom, when I was 18 years old, or 17, not to really, the details don't matter, but she took <laughs> me to Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we went to Bourbon Street, mm -hmm. it's Mardi Gras, it's raining, all that kind of stuff. And she said, just live your life, Steve. And she started uh, taking pictures of everyone on Mardi Gras. She's like, your friends are going to want these pictures anyway. Let's just get it over with so we can have a good time. So <laughs> that's really the only advice my mom ever gave me is have a good time. And, in her um, southern accent. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> Anytime I do an impression of mothers now, it's always actually an impression of Fallon, who I work with as mother, because she has the best accent ever. Uh, any other things my mom said? She said, uh, if I have to reach back there, you're not going to like it. She also said, if I brought you into this world, I 
can take you out of it also. Um, <laughs> These are really touching. We're so sorry. What's she's, the other one? She's in the studio. She she's also said, wonderful. you're not she's my like... child. Uh, I like the other one better. Um, and uh, why didn't you go to college, like I said, and why did you get into radio? Get out of my house. This sounds like all things that you tell your therapist. This feels like it could go on yeah. for a while. Hey, look at There's my son, Isaac. Oh, he, hi, bud. Uh, See, Mom, here's a story Dad, too, guys. Isaac. Hey, Steve-O's family. That's my with, fault. With a broken arm? That's maybe partially my fault. And when I say partially, my wife would say it was all my fault. But it's okay because Mother's Day Sunday, I'm really excited for my wife and I'm excited for Rena. Me too. It's Rena's first Mother's Day. It is. That means that the baby's going to get up early. <laughs> she usually does. Cry, <laughs> maybe throw up on you once or twice. Per usual. And uh, your husband will probably sleep in. If he's like me, on our first Mother's Day. Steve, thanks for coming in. We no, really appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Really I hope touching. your family accepts you back into the nest after this whole thing. They haven't before, so why would they start now? <laughs> I Do the Boston thing before we're done. I called you. We'll be right back. Them apples. We'll be right back. No, I don't know how to do it. Hey. Okay, we will for real. Be right back. I'll think about it. <laughs>